Hi, look at these two pictures. And let's count how many stars are present in this picture. 1, 2, 3, 4. And in this picture, 1, 2, 3, 4. How many arrows are present in this picture? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, how many arrows are present in this picture? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, don't you think it was easy counting all the stars and the arrows in this picture than this one? That is because here all the shapes are arranged. Okay, they are classified according to their shapes. But here it's a chaos. So, in the chaos, if you have to find one thing, you might end up getting another one. Alright, even if someday you have to go to a library. So, when you go to a library, you want to find a book. Library is so sorted. There all the books are kept according to the subject, the authors, etc. So, they are always classified there. But if you go to a library which is a mess, okay, it, all the books are just here and there. So, once you go to find a chemistry book, you go home and check, oh, it's a mathematics book. So, that's ha that happens when it is a chaos. Also, when you go to supermarket, super, I love shopping in supermarkets, they are so sorted. Things are kept in sections. If you want to buy cosmetics, just go to that section. If you want to buy some toiletries, go to that section. And even each section has subsections. So it's so sorted there. But imagine if someday you end up in a supermarket where everything is just messed up. The shampoos are kept with chips. The clothes are kept with something else. So in such situation, if you want a shampoo with particular properties or, the, or some brand, you go and search for it. Finally, you get one, but still it's not the one which you wanted. Again, you have to search the entire mess. So don't you think classification of things makes life easier for us? The same thing had happened long, long ago with the scientists. That time, they knew that there are something called elements. And with these elements, all the other things around us is, are formed. Now, there were certain elements already found at that time. But it was very difficult to remember the properties of every element. So, it was better to classify them. So, scientists felt the need of classification of elements. So, let's see what were the reasons behind classifying elements. Now, initially, the scientists had started grouping elements according to their physical properties, like melting point, boiling point, density. Suppose the elements having high melting point, boiling point were categorized as one group and the others were categorized as, uh, in other groups, etc. But this did not serve the purpose of classification because there they found out that in one particular group, there were so many elements and in another, another group, there were only little elements. So how do we generalize things? How do we call these, what do we call these elements and those elements? So this was the main reason that, that led scientists to think what would be the proper classification of elements. So the first reason is the number of elements falling in a particular group was so large that it did not serve the purpose of classification. Okay, now let's go to the second reason. The second reason is that some of the characteristics being considered varied under different conditions. That means there were certain elements that were uh, observed that time whose characteristics were okay at room temperature but they varied at other temperatures or other conditions. So they thought that this classification that we are grouping things according to a particular, particular characteristic is not right because this characteristic can be different at other conditions. So due to which scientists felt the importance of classifying elements in a better way. Okay, let's go to the third reason now. The other reason due to which the classification of elements became very important was that there were certain elements which showed metallic as well as non-metallic characteristics. Already the scientists had found out that elements are there which are metals and non-metals. They had classified. But then they found out that there are certain elements which show both the properties of a metal as well as a non-metal. How do we classify them? So then there came a need of better classification of elements. Scientists also felt that there are certain metals but some of them don't conduct electricity and many of them do. But these conduct electricity may be under certain other conditions. So all these confusions led scientists to find out a way to classify the elements in a very particular and a good way. So as we go further, we will learn that which scientists classified elements how, which with which idea. So let's go ahead and see all that. Here we come to the end of this session.